In the wake of the coronavirus scare, it has been widely discussed across media and government how so-called developed and advanced societies have become so helpless and panicked in just a few short weeks. One secret of Sanatana Hindu Dharma of yogic sciences, Ayurveda and spiritual healing that has been revealed is that whatever system of healing you learn to trust as a child, that system will actually come to work best for you. Not just the placebo effect, but your strong trust in that specific healing system actually makes it more effective for you and your connection to its system and processes. But what if the systems we trust operate mostly by treating symptoms and highly publicized wars against diseases, fear-mongering, and the decades-long search for a cure, cures that never come? And all the while, the billion-dollar companies that are supposedly doing the searching are marketing to us patented designer drugs that only mask symptoms and make billions, but never provide a lasting solution. Then we find ourselves today stricken by fear and powerlessness. As reported on from many circles as communities scramble to organize amidst the coronavirus pandemic, even the traditional healing methods and lifestyle of Sanatana Hindu Dharma have come under attack. Previously instituted anti-superstition legislation across India outright bans spiritual healing, traditional medicines, and ancient healing rituals. Additionally, many are asking why no country in the world declares itself a Hindu nation capable of organizing and sharing ancient cures with panic-stricken global populations. Recent news reports amidst the coronavirus outbreak have noted how Sanatana Hindu Dharma as a living civilization has actually evolved to address all possible problems and solutions faced by a society. However, doctors today are lamenting that the available science of Yoga Shastras, Ayurveda, Siddha Medicine, Atharaveda, and Shusutra Samhita are being ignored when people are struggling for solutions. One of the global initiatives that has been very effective in recent days is from Sri Kailasa, the world's only Hindu nation. Sri Kailasa from Bhagavan Nityananda has started providing solutions on a global scale through online and local outreach. The sessions are offered to everyone and can be availed by visiting www.paramashivoham.org slash level 2. There has been some reaction in recent days against the traditional healing methods of Hindus as they have been spending more time in their homes performing rituals and healing amidst recommendations to limit large social gatherings. One of the more common but short-sighted attacks against Hindus has been that if Hindu life was so great in the past, why are they suffering so much today? The kings, poets, and temples of Tamil Sangam and Lord Ram Sayodhya was more than 10,000 years ago. The palaces of Sri Krishna's Dwarka, more than 5,000. Nalanda and Takshashila, from 3,000 years ago. And British reported 100,000 Gurukuls in Bihar and Bengal, just 200 years ago. So what happened between then and now? Some have cited the British record of bringing literacy to India just 100 years ago. But then literacy in India must have been entirely wiped out during the hundred years before that. Was it 10,000 years of enlightenment civilization in India that created the crises of today? Or the abandoning of such a civilization? 